Okay, three, two, one, and away we go, Connie. Here we are, first first bloody podcast for the Devil May Care. How's it going? Ooh, I'm excited. But I'm a bit I'm a bit nervous too. But see, the fun thing is that when you're around me, you find that you don't have to be nervous about things on yourself because I managed to do that all on my own. I was just telling um, Andrew yesterday, well, just before that, yesterday when I was at the Screen Queensland um, bloody Logies thing, right? When you had all the questions, it's like I kid you not, sixty seconds into the whole Q and A where the intro uh, the interview is just doing all the introductions and shit. Yeah. My phone goes off. Oh, and, my God. <laughs> and it's not just a ringtone. It's death metal. <laughs> Is it's it the, death to all but metal? <laughs> that, no, no, no. <laughs> it's still Panther? <laughs> it's, um, no, it's okay. actually like okay. full death metal, like the <laughs> sort of thing. Right. And it was that, that it was honest to God, that situation, like, fuck, 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 just oh. trying to get rid of it. And, like, oh, no gosh. amount of swiping was doing it at the time. And, <laughs> but, of course. <laughs> and, yeah, everyone's looking, everyone's looking at me. And it's like, of all the bloody ringtones I could have, that go off and the, once I finally got it, the interview was like, yes, thank you for that. And it was like... You should have just looked at someone else and gone... Oh, geez, it's like, hi, <laughs> hi, important people, how's it going? <laughs> We're off to a good start. But then the great thing was that you saw all the um, all the other people just sort of go, oh, I fucking don't want to be like that. Yeah, exactly. Guy. Ooh, phone's on silent. <laughs> oh, so, dear. yeah, like I said, no matter how silly you think you may be, I can top it any day of the week. Thank you. That helps. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so Connie, we're going to get into the questions, and so um, the purpose of this is like this is the first one we're, we're recording for the day. Whether it ends up being like the, uh, the way we release it, another story entirely, mm-hmm. but we're going to do this sort of very much, very much unedited. Um, and since this is the first one, here we go. It's oh. basically just going to go straight into a balls deep. Right. So. Um, Connie, how long have you been doing this and when did you actually start taking this seriously? Because that is a, those are two different things as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, gosh, going all the way back, I actually studied about 20 years ago. So I'm showing my age here. Really? Yeah, I did that down in Melbourne and uh, I'd been a really academic student <coughs> in high school. So I, I never thought I'd do anything creative. But mm. as I got into my 20s, I kind of really started to have the need to be creative. And I found this makeup course and did it and... To be honest, I actually found it really hard to, to get any work done there, and I kind of gave yeah. it up. So it was when I moved to the Gold Coast, and that was about um, 12 years ago, and I got into a short film, yep. uh, and that kind of just opened the doors. From that short film, I literally yep. got onto my first feature, and I, it was like the right yep. time. It was meant to be. So it's definitely about 10 years now that I have been working in film um, because I guess – I literally went from one short into a uh, feature film. Mm. I guess I took it seriously from then. So, yep. um, yeah, and I've, it's just um, – I think it surprised me how quickly it's all sort of snowballed. Yeah. I, I thought it would be a lot harder. And I'm, I'm not going to say it was easy because I did have to do a lot of unpaid or really yeah. low pay. Just Student for, films. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, just whatever, to, just to network and meet people and get myself out there. But um, – yeah, I feel like I'm really lucky now to be able to say that it's my job. This is what I do for a living. So. It actually is what you do for a living. And this is what I do makeup, for a living. How many makeup <laughs> artists in film can actually say that? So yeah. you said you went from a short film to a feature film mm. pretty quickly. Like, yeah. How did that happen? Because that's a pretty big leap. Like Dave Beamish, for instance, he got onto a feature film almost straight away. Like yeah. a decent one too. Yep. So how, right. did it, how did it go? For- uh, well, the short was just a... I don't even know if it was ever completed. It was just a little short. And it had like vampires and <laughs> zombie things in it. And because I'm such a horror nerd, I was yeah. like, oh, straight away, of course, I, I went for that job and I don't think I might have got paid anything for it. But um, so there was a producer on that and he said to me straight away on that shoot, I must have just liked the way I worked. And he said, <coughs> I'm doing a feature and we have already a makeup department head, but how would you like to come and assist? And of course, you know, I hadn't been on a feature yet. So I was like, oh, for sure. He's like, yeah, what's involved? Yeah. How and um, and I was very, very lucky that that feature happened to have, you know, Australian cinema legends, John Jarrett and Roger Ward and what people was like that. Film? Bad behavior. Yeah, right. And uh, so, um, yeah. And I will never, ever forget that, like, at the end of that film, Roger Ward, famous for, like, Turkey Shoot and Man from Hong Kong, and he was in Mad Max and... <laughs> He wrote me a testimonial saying, you're going to go far. Just, and so what, did you th- what do you think you did differently on that short film? Like, like you said, it was a horror zombie one, so it's yeah. just one of those ones where you can go ballistic. Like, oh, that was the short. The, the feature was um, um, not, not horror, but it did have some, a little, it had some effects in it definitely and did have a little yep. bit of those elements in it. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's hard to say. I don't know why I get a lot of the work. I mean... Yeah. 
Uh, people do say to me, you're very personable, you're very easy to get on with. And I guess as a makeup artist, if the cast are comfortable with me, mm. the talent need to be comfortable, then I'm more likely to get more work because, you know, well, sometimes they ask for me. So yeah, um, And we'll put it like from the perspective of a director, like uh, two things I want to see. Um, and you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but I find it easier to tone down makeup as opposed to bring it up because you can't, oh, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be going to a makeup artist like more, more, like just more, it's like more, what, what do you think? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, I want yeah. more blood, I want more this and that. Um, so to message to makeup artists out there as from my perspective mm. anyway, like just whatever you think, go higher because like yeah. we're not in, like, especially when short films, we're not in this business to be subtle as far as I'm concerned. We don't yeah, have yeah. the luxury of that. I think though that isn't a, a thing you need to interpret what the director mm. wants and um, yeah, I mean we I just had, had conversations prior, we, we had meetings and I knew what you wanted um, and hopefully yeah. <laughs> I delivered on what you wanted. I, I have um, been posting them quite, re- quite regularly and yeah. when I... I and when it comes to a, a marketing sort of strategy, I probably shouldn't have been doing that because I was revealing things, but I was just like... T- t- yeah, you know? but you've also got a lot of people really intrigued as well yes. because they see the photos and they're like, yes. oh, "What? what is this? Like, this looks amazing. So The, the one with Melinda was probably my yes. favourite one where yes. um, that was, where it's like, is that enough? Like, no, more. Dump yeah, the whole yeah. bowl, basically. But I find that, I, again, <coughs> being a horror fan, I love mm. gore and I love yeah. horror. So I'm uh, for me, I'm a little bit cautious. I try to to tone down a little bit and then yeah. I'm worried I might bring too much to the table and then they're like, oh, my gosh, Connie, what have you done? So uh, I have been called Queen of Blood by a few people. That's not so. a bad Queen of <laughs> something <laughs> awesome. Like. So I just go, okay, let me not put too much because I can add more <laughs> if need be. Um, but for me, I would drown everything, everything in blood because I love it. <laughs> you mentioned your horror art, man. So can you explain mm. a bit about that? Because most, you know, you haven't really rested on your laurels. Like you've gone off and in your 20 years and expanded into a whole bunch of things, your mm-hmm. book of, of, um, of uh, Bliss and... Uh, sorry, Black my cosmetics brand and yes. oh, my horror Bliss, art. And, and yeah. your book as well, so... <laughs> yeah, the book, yep. I keep busy. Yeah, I try to. <laughs> can you elaborate a bit on that? Like um, uh, how much success mm-hmm. or you know, or just satisfaction and fulfilment have you gotten out of that? Mm. Um, the art is something that I am so in love with right now. Yeah. Um, I didn't perceive what I did completely as an art form. Yep. So I just thought, oh, yeah, it's just like props for film because I'm, sometimes I'd be asked to make a severed head or, a you know, a skull or whatever, yeah, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So um, because of my fixed background, of course, I can make those things. Um, and people <coughs> kind of expressed an interest in, oh, I'd yeah. love that in my house. And I was yeah. like, really? Like, I hadn't seen it like that. And people were saying, oh, that's amazing artwork. And I was like, no, they're just props. They're not... Yeah, Ah, no. but then when I realised that it was perceived like that, I thought, oh, okay, I guess it kind of is. And um, I really elaborated on that, really expanded, and just now I'm sculpting, you know, demon heads and all sorts because of crazy things, and yeah, yeah. Um, and body parts. And um, I love doing dolls. I, I get creepy, like you know, old dolls, and I yeah. really <laughs> mess them <laughs> yeah, I've up. Seen a couple. Oh. <laughs> and um, it's 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 been good. Like I was initially at the um, a art gallery in Surface, and I was there for about fourteen mm. months. Um, which was fantastic, but um, I ended up finding Etsy, which is like a big online store, which is worldwide, mm. and uh, I've been able to sell around the world through that. So it's incredible. People, yeah. especially in the States, mostly most of my customers are from the US because mm. they buy for Halloween and or just buy all year round. Oh, you're coming up to peak season uh, soon, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I sold to Japan and yeah. South America and North America and um, Europe and so my stuff's going everywhere. So I'm I'm just so like blown away and yeah. honoured that these creepy things I make end up in people's homes. It's, and it's, it's that weird feeling. It's like, oh man, there are people just fucked up as me, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Like, like there are people that are weird and like totally because then people go to me, who wants this stuff? I'm like, <laughs> I, I don't know, like just like, regular folk. Like, like, like people <laughs> just go, well, who would want that? And it's like apparently more people than we thought. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and it's funny, I do get, I do get not criticised, I guess, but <laughs> judged. And people yes. are like, who wants that? And it was beautiful because that happened. And I put a voodoo type doll that I'd made. I remember that. It sold within four yeah. hours, and I was just like, "Yes, like, it's validation." I, I'm not the only weirdo out here. <laughs> I remember that one because, like, you, you you kind of when you're a creative and you're starting to put your stuff on, you, you kind of think it's going to take a while for it to kick on. Yeah. But um, no, it's like like you said, it sold within four hours, and it's, and you just. But the thing is, you got to keep working at it though you yes. can't you can't oh, drop totally. it off if you're going to make something of it, it's like yeah this is going to su- you're going to love this but yep. it's going to suck at some point yep. and you're going to be fried but yep. you just got to push through that because you need to do the consistency right. thing i feel like i need to like never be afraid of just doing what i want like following through on what i think yeah. is 
the right thing because sometimes I think, oh, have I gone too far? Am I going to upset someone? But then I'm like, no, no, I'll just make what comes from the heart. This is what I want to yeah. do. This is what I want to make. So uh, whether that be makeup or yep. the art, I just just go with it. <laughs> so a um, bit of a quick, bit of a change of uh, subject, mate. Mm-hmm. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about is like we've all got our influences, mm-hmm. both contemporary and the old school ones. So like mm-hmm. you've got um, uh, obviously old school Frankenstein, old school Draculas yeah. um, that you can sort of source as well. But sometimes they come from unorthodox areas. Like uh, for the Devil, the second part was very much based on mm-hmm. largely the French New Wave movement of the 60s yep. um, with uh, Jean-Luc Godard's uh, Breathless and then last year Marienbad um, mixed with a bit of Casablanca. And those mm-hmm. are the main influences. So they can come from all walks of life. I just happen to be in them at the time. Yeah. So can you elaborate on where some of yours have come from, both when you started and yeah, more, yeah. To this, more to this? Day? Um, well, like you said, it does come from everywhere, really. Yeah. I mean, it can be music that I've heard. It can be something I've I've read can you like the music just, that you've heard like that's well, I, I like just to explain yeah, that because it's um, fun i don't know like well at the moment <coughs> i'm not sure if you're familiar with a band called ghost yes ghost yeah like oh, um, yeah. Yeah. gosh yeah like just you know I, I get put that on and as i'm working it inspires me and i get you know you sort of oh, i get imagery in your head i guess i mean that's a very sort of strong mm. religious Satan is, I don't know, it's a mix of everything and stuff. It's, it's just fun. It's, isn't it? Yeah, it's so it's fun. fun. Um, but, you know, um, colors. I mean, I could walk down the street and see the, you know, the wet ground, yep. and the, the gray with contrast with the green leaves or something. Like, literally, mm. I'd be amazed sometimes at the things that go, oh, that, that's really cool. I wonder if I could use those colors or if, yes. I, if I could, you know. So um, it comes from everywhere. But, um, do you take photos of everything for your inspiration I too? I do, yes. I do. Patterns, anything, like, really. <coughs> Um, but as far as people, like, I definitely am a hardcore fan of Tom Savini. Yep. Um, his work, you know, Dawn of the Dead, Day of oh, the Dead, yeah. The Prowl, oh, my God, like, that, guy's a legend. That movie, that movie changed not zombies. Like, the, yeah. the remake, like, well, both the original and then the remake, like, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I kind of want Zack Snyder just to make a good zombie movie again because it's like, dude, you, you nailed that. You were the first one to really yes. do the running zombies, and that yeah. changed everything. Yeah. And he does, um, well, so he came up with all these like sort of interesting ways of shooting things so that you could mm. get a special effect. Like how do we get, show something, you know, a big wooden stake going through a body or yeah. whatever. Like, and he's, and he's been so lovely that he even reveals half of this stuff in books. He's written books and. Oh, is actually uh, uh, Tom Savini? Yeah, yes. Tom Savini. Yeah. So he's, um, and I've, I've really been fortunate to meet him twice now at like horror conventions over there. Yeah. Um, and over in the US. And, um. Other, the other people I really love are K&B FX, who are yep. sort of, I think, around the late 80s started up, and mm-hmm. they've got hundreds and hundreds of films to their name. Like For, for a reason. Films. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like Greg Nicotero, and who's still like, you know, Walking Dead, and their work just blows my mind. There was, there was, I remember there was a New Zealand production not long ago called uh, Black Sheep, right. and they'll, yep. um, I didn't... I, while I didn't watch it, I, like, I caught some of the um, the documentary that they were making, and they went to the the VFX guys and the makeup guys, and it's like we've got we've got like mutant sheep eating people. This yeah. is why we got into this yeah. business. That's right, exactly. <laughs> it's what, like what how far want? can we go? Doesn't yeah. matter. And like and I'm, I can imagine there are jobs that actors where they get to stretch their craft, and you know they get to really stretch a character and try something. There yep. must be ones that you um, would take on, just like all right, what can I do? Like this is Absolutely. awesome. This is interesting. What can I do with this? And you know like. Is has there been constrictions on your creativity when it comes to what directors want? Where you're like, I know that's not right, but yeah. you have to. Um, a little bit, I guess. Um, sometimes it's the movie version of the thing. So, yep. like for example, a bullet wound. Yeah. You know, it might. It doesn't necessarily look that bad in real life. It's like yeah. a little hole. <laughs> Directors like, we'll put lots of blood and make it big and gapy, and yeah, so okay. that's fine. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know, we are making movies, um, but. Um, <coughs> I think sometimes it's I I like I said would like to go more hardcore with yeah. the with the effect and sometimes they're like pull back a little bit we don't yeah. we don't want that much blood or we don't want that much oh man the uh, idea, some of the ideas I've had like imagine you know there's a I can't remember what the uh, the fungus name is but it's sort of gr- it's, it gets goes in ants and then just sort of sprouts these things like uh, it's and it literally turns the ants insane I was like what if it mute what if somehow like a government agency mutated that to try and make a you know super film. soldier thing <laughs> and i was like imagine someone you actually have like this big i don't know stuff thing full of whatever and like it's a human where it's like to come out their eyes and like their arms their eyes and oh, everything <laughs> and then it's like just a big circular shot around the whole thing and all of a sudden it's like boom 
know, the, it's it, because that's what happens. Like the fungus gets in, yeah, takes like so, the spores all over. Yeah, and spores yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. It's like just yeah. imagine that. Like people, you got the POV or the spores, and the people are running through the halls it's going. I do get excited when I get handed scripts that are like full of crazy stuff. Like I did yeah. a feature, um, I think it was about two years ago now, and lots of people were being um, um, attacked. So there's like stabs yeah. and people shooting themselves in the head and yeah. uh, right, guys, we're being, gonna work out beaten to death with a sandwich maker and all sorts of yeah. crazy things. So um, yeah, that's really it's fun. So like, what's next for you, fun. Connie? Um, next, I had a feature <coughs> that was meant to start this week. There's unfortunately been postponed. Yep. Um, it's, but yeah, that's you know, the nature of film. And then mm. just like, <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got a, I've got a short coming up really soon that, um, I need to make some really interesting prosthetics for. Yeah. Let's just say it, it involves the, uh, intimate regions of a person. <laughs> yeah. So I can't, I can't give away more than that for now, but it's, it's the first time I'm going to be really making well, a man, one prosthetic I, for that area. <laughs> I hope it makes, makes it past the Facebook bloody, uh, restrictions. And I don't you can know if I can post much of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've got, I've got, um, um, two sort of features I'm thinking are sort of a bit further down yep. in the next few months um, and uh, and a number of shorts actually. So, mm. yeah, keeping busy. Oh, it's, just, it's great when all that work stacks up. You're like, oh, like, I'm so busy. Fuck, you know, how am I going to manage? But Yeah, I know, but it does it does happen that it's a lot all at once where yes. I kind of get like well, yeah, this that... actual week was meant to be, I was contacted about four different productions to come and do four things at once, which I clearly couldn't take on four productions at once. But yeah. And then you'll just have that month of absolutely nothing. So yes. it's not a nine-to-five job. Yes, but... it's, uh, it's, it's one of the... I, you can almost think of it like a 12 to 1 job, where it's like yeah. 12 in the afternoon to 1 in the morning. Yeah. Or all night shoots. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did a few of those. I'm sorry. But, yeah. but um, there have been, a, yeah, people have seen some shots and uh, they're pretty happy. So, with, especially with right. the ADR. And um, the great thing is, like, a lot of it all, it all came up, especially like those extra two dead people that we have in it. Later on, yeah. that people don't know about yet. Yes, the, the dead people. The, yes. de- the dead. And they did really good with that. Mm. Those dead people. Man, it's, it's, it's going to look. It's looking brutal, mate. <laughs> yeah. Brutal. Fantastic. And I, I can't. I can't. I've revealed it to a couple friends, but they they're not going to tell anyone. So. No, no, no. But, Keep yeah. it hush, hush. Connie. <laughs> Um, I'll, uh, I'll get you a link from you as well and we'll leave it in the, um, the description below in the comments. I'm just going to do that thing that everyone does. Check in the right. comments below. Okay, cool. um, but yeah, pleasure having you here, mate. Thank you. It was yeah. an absolute pleasure to be here and chat to you again. Thank yes. you. Love it. All right. Cheers. Thanks, man.